The Bible is full of stories about journeys. Adam and Eve on their way out of Eden, and then Abram and Sarai called out of Ur to walk and walk and walk toward a promise of a new homeland. Sounds a lot like the global migrants today. And then the Egyptians, uh, the Israelites, the Hebrew tribe leaving Egypt from slavery. And then the Israelites wandering 40 years in the wilderness. And that then is remembered by Luke in Jesus' 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness, preparing for his ministry. But the journey story that Jane read to us today, one we call the prodigal, is one of the most finely crafted and nuanced stories told by Jesus himself that was remembered in great detail by the early church. And it's a story that has been told and retold and retold throughout 2,000 years of Western art, right, and history. Why? Why is it? What makes the prodigal a story that is so memorable and universal? I think it's because in this story, in this one story, Jesus weaves together what I would call the trinity, a trinity of the human spirit. The archetypal themes of home and journey and being lost. Do you see them? Home and journey and being lost. Journey is something that is so commonplace for us. We do it all day long. We do it week in, week out, monthly, yearly. That it's easy for us to overlook the fact that every journey starts somewhere. And usually, most often, from home. And no, this is not Bilbo Baggins' house. <laughs> it's an ancient Celtic home in, uh, in northern Spain. All our journeys begin from home. And in this story of the prodigal, Jesus is suggesting that the journey of faith is a story where we leave our home and the journey itself somehow in a grace-filled paradox leads us back even more deeply to our home. That that can happen. That can happen for us. Have you known that kind of journey? What is it that makes home home for you? What are some of those things? Just one word. People. Hmm? <laughs> Where your bed is. <laughs> I like that. Someone else up here? Memories. What else? What makes home home? Comfort. Yes, in the back. Pardon? A place you trust. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you, Paulina. What else? What makes home home? All of those things, right? Okay, now let's have fun. Why do we leave home? <laughs> if it's all that, why do we leave? <laughs> Mary says, because it's boring. Do I say a hand? Dave? No. Why do we leave home? There's all kinds of reasons. Adventure. We're looking for adventure. Yes. What else? 
to expand our horizons. Thank you, Jeannie, who went to Turkey, <laughs> right? To grow up, yes. What else? What? Oh, seeking fulfillment. Independence, very good. What? Change, Change for those who are bored. <laughs> yeah? All kinds of reasons why we leave home, right? It's, it's amazing in this story how the prodigal leaves and it's, it's you know, from who knows? Because it doesn't, it kind of says why, but not really, right? He just knows he can do this if he asks uh, for his um, inheritance. You know, if he's got the bucks, he can go live, uh, get off the farm maybe, right? <laughs> And he does so, and yet in his journey, he comes back, right? In the journey itself, calls him back home. And that's, that's part of what makes the prodigal story stand out, because it's a story about finding our way back home, right? Finding our way back home. So there's another story that I think is very deeply embedded in the Western mind about finding one's way back home. And uh, one version of it goes like this. In a different place, in a different time, different people around me, I would like to know of their different world and how Different they find me. And just, what's a whiz? Is it big? Will it scare me? If I ask to leave, will the whiz even hear me? How will I know then if I'll ever get home again? Here I am alone, though it feels the same. I don't know where I'm going. I'm here on my own, and it's not a game, and a strange wind is blowing. I am so amazed at the things that I see here. Don't want to be afraid. I just don't want to be here. In my mind, this is clear. What am I doing here? I wish I was home. Have you ever felt that way? Like life has just snatched you up, tossed you into the air, spun you around and around and around, and then dumped you unceremoniously in some great big new world with nothing but your wits to land on. I know it's happened to some of you. To some of you. You know that feeling. And so like Dorothy and the prodigal, there are times in our lives when we are so painfully aware of how far we are from home. How very far we are from home. You know, that story is so deeply ingrained in me that it took, it took me, I have to confess, I've been doing a lot of confessing this Lent, I confess, I was pretty old before it dawned on me that her name is Dorothy Gale. As in high winds, right? Cyclone, tornado. It's a twister. It's a twister. I just know that when the, when the winds, those high winds start to rip through this valley, I always text my cousin who lives here, N-E-M, N-E-M. Right? You know this story about going home, making your way back home. You've known it. We've all known it since 1900, since 1939, in color, <laughs> or in 1975, or even more recently. But it is a story about finding one's way back home in a journey and in this journey, Dorothy Gale, 
Her longing heart leads her so far, far away from home, or does it? And along the journey, she discovers what? Home. She returns, rather like the prodigal, to find even deeper roots in the home that she thought she had lost. Right? Another archetypal story. Home is so precious to us that it's frightening. It's a little unsettling that Jesus rejects entirely the idea that home is about a place or the people we know and love. That deep home in our souls that we're talking about this morning, that we're trying to reach for and define, I believe that is what Jesus called the kingdom of God. The place where God's grace and power are here right now. Not in heaven sometime later or some end of time, but here and now. And his mission was to invite Peter, Paul, you and me, into this kingdom where God's grace and power are there with us and for us. The kingdom of God. St. Augustine said it like this, our hearts, this was his prayer, our hearts are restless until they rest in thee. Do you hear that? Is that your prayer? And Henry Nouwen defined it as the source of love in the depths of my being. Is that not home? Is the kingdom of God not home for Christians? And here's the great paradox that I find in this. If life in God is the only home we need, as Jesus would say, then it's not a home that finds its peace sitting comfortably, warmly by the hearth. Nope. It's a peace that's found only searching the highways and the byways for those who do not yet know God's love. That's why I invite you to come and meet our neighbors. To find those who are still lost to God's love. For a humanist, perhaps home is finding our highest self. But Jesus tells us we can't get there from here without God's guidance. The one who heard our burning cry and who is with us in every breath we take, we need God's guidance to get home, back home. We need signs along the way that show us when we're getting closer and that we're in the right direction. And I found this on the Camino. It says, you are right where you need to be. And I'll tell you, that was really good news for someone on a journey. Let me invite you to remember that God has been and will continue to be with you on your journey. The generosity of God's presence and power in your life will never end. Remember that as you choose what you will give.